Hey guys, it's the Slimy Dog here with another episode of Speculations. In this episode, we're going to be talking about the game Pokemon X and Pokemon Y. So recently, the Pokemon Company released a gameplay trailer of these games, and I'm going to be analyzing them and telling you a few of my thoughts about the games. So right off the bat, we see this new Pokemon. This is called Gogoat. It's a kind of bull-like Pokemon, kind of like the Tauros or Buffalant of this generation. As you can see, we're clearly riding on it, which is why it's called the Riding Pokemon. It's not really that fast, which is why, although many people believe that this is actually the bicycle of this generation, I think it's probably not. Um, right now, there's not really much use for this Pokemon, or at least for riding on this Pokemon, and I believe it's just going to be a gimmick to show off the 3D effects of the game. If there's any use that I could think of of this Pokemon, or at least riding on it, it would be that it would act like a repel in that when you go into wild grass, you wouldn't encounter any Pokemon. Now moving on, we see another angle of this female trainer. If we just pause, we'll notice that behind her we have this Eiffel Tower-like building, and there's also this kind of signboard. Now if we kind of look at a new, different angle of that, we can see it a little better. You can see that the city which is called Luminous City, is kind of circular in shape. Now, an interesting fact about Luminous City is that Paris is called La Ville de Luminaire. And this game is pretty much based off France. We can also see that the map of this region, which is called the Carlos region, is quite similar in terms of shape to the map of France. So if we continue walking, we're going to notice that there is a Route 5 symbol over there. At least, there's a 5 over there, and I believe that's the Route 5. Now, we saw that the city was kind of circular in shape from that um, sign that we noticed before. And I think that this is one of the passages. I'm quite sure that there's going to be more passages leading to other different routes all around the city. And the game is basically centered around the city. But more importantly, We'll notice that there's a camera angle change. Now, I'm not too sure whether this camera angle change is manual or automatic, but we'll get to that a little later. Another thing that we can notice is that the player just moved diagonally over there. Now, diagonal movement has been confirmed, but we're still not sure whether 360 movement in all directions is possible, in contrast to the north-south-east-west movement that was possible in the previous generations. As we can see here, the male character is moving diagonally past that trainer. So now we can see a lot of the different angles that you can walk in. Notice the coffee cup in the top left corner. Keep that in mind, because we'll get back to that in a few more moments. As you can clearly see, there are a lot of different camera angles in this game. Like this one, 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 and this one. So, remember that coffee cup that I told you about? Well, it's back, but now we're in a completely different angle. This gets me back to the automatic versus manual control of the camera. I'm pretty sure that it's automatic depending on the different areas that you walk. For example, if you walk on the sidewalk, you get this kind of view, or you can get this kind of view. If you're walking on the road, you get this kind of view, and if you walk in the grassy areas, you get this kind of view. So now we can finally move on to the next part of the game, the battles. Here we can see Froakie using the move Bubble, which is one of the four moves that it can learn by the level, level 8. Now we have Chespin using a different move, Leech Seed. Now Leech Seed isn't part of the four moves that are given down there, but it's still a move that it can learn, so that's interesting. Finally we have Fennekin using a move that's probably Ember. Although I'm not too sure because it's kind of a fire spin kind of move because of the spinning animation. Finally, we get to this interesting part, the park bench. Now I'm going to be talking to you a little about this. Firstly, we see that gym symbol over there. Now that's quite interesting, which means that there's a gym in this city. Now considering the fact that there's a Roselia or Roserade statue right over there, we can probably guess that this is going to be the grass gym which we saw over there. Also, if we look over here, we can see that the city in the top left corner resembles that a little. I'm going to give you an example. Now take a look at the different numbers on the buildings, 
and keep that in mind because I'm going to show you the other city again. Also keep in mind that this is Route 3 as you can see from the signpost over there. Notice how all the buildings have a similar color scheme. This probably means that this grass gym is probably going to be somewhere in the beginning of the game. Either the first or the second gym. Now getting back to the trailer. As we can see, there's another new Pokemon here. This Pokemon is called Fletchling, and I think it's probably going to be one of the first few Pokemons that you can catch. It's a flying type, and it might evolve into a fire flying type, as you can see because it's using the move Flame Charge. The Pokemon that it's attacking is another new Pokemon, which we're going to get to soon. Here we see another new Pokemon called Panjim. This is a panda Pokemon, and it's fighting type. It's probably my personal favorite, because I mean, who doesn't like pandas? Here we can see it's using a new move, which is called Parting Shot. What it basically does is it lowers the opponent's stats while switching the Pokemon out, kind of like U-Turn, except in U-Turn it does damage and then switches out the Pokemon. And finally we get back to that Pokemon that I was talking about. This Pokemon is called Helioptile. It's a lizard Pokemon, which can be evident from the name, and it's an electric type. It has another new move, which is called Parabolic Charge. Parabolic Charge does damage to the opponent's Pokemon and heals your own Pokemon by half the damage that was dealt. Kind of like Absorb except Electric type. And finally we see Go-Goat again, except this time in battle. Notice that it's not wearing the saddle like it was at the beginning of the game. It uses the move Horn Leech, which is not a new move, but we can see that it's very majestic. And that's the end of the trailer. Now I'm going to show you a few pictures which were also released by the Pokemon Company and are related to the Pokemon which were shown in the video. First we have a few of the sprites. Now you can see they're quite cramped, but I don't really mind because I've already showed you them. I'll only get into more depth with the character sprites because there's something interesting that I might want you to notice. Remember this scene from the first trailer? Well, a lot of you noticed that there was a mirror and thought that there would be character customization. Well, guess what? You guys are right, because there actually is character customization. These are the different male characters that you can choose from, and these are the different female characters. You've probably noticed that there's not too many choices to choose from, but there's probably going to be more in-game choices that you can buy from in stores, from the dream world if they bring that back, or even as DLC. Hopefully you don't have to pay for it. And finally we see this. Now I'm not too sure what this is. It's either one of two things. Either the Pokemon triple battles and rotational battles, which would be really interesting to see, or the place where you can get your starter Pokemon, which is why there are three starter Pokemon here. Remember how I talked about how I talk about the sprites again? Inception. Well, I'm talking about them. And you can notice that there's those bands on both the characters' wrists. If we take a closer look at them, we'll notice that there's a kind of pearl on them. This might be used for the new bonding mechanism, which we've heard about. Finally, we see this picture. As you can clearly see, there's a Murill over there, which is a 3rd gen Pokemon, which is making a comeback in 6th gen. The more interesting thing is this. As you can see on that sign, there's a Go-Goat, or at least something that looks somewhat like a Go-Goat. This might symbolize the places that you can ride on Go-Goat, kind of like the bicycle mount and dismount points. Also, if you look in the background, you'll notice that there are two Pokemon that look somewhat like Go-Goat, but aren't quite the same colors. This is some concept art that's been created for these Pokemon. Now remember that this is an official, so don't take it that seriously. Many people believe that this might either be a pre-evolution of Go-Goat, or the female sprite for Go-Goat. Finally, we see a few new battle animations. This one shows us how a trainer appears when she first challenges us to a battle, kind of like the Elite Four Gym Leader style. Next, we have the actual battles with the HP bar and the level. Here we have the animation for throwing a Pokeball. This is what happens when the Pokemon breaks out, and this is what happens when you catch it. The final picture that I'm going to show you is the Pokédex. It looks really interesting, and I can't really recognize anything from it, but I'm really looking forward to seeing how it's going to play out, especially with the 3D. And finally, we have the official box arts of the two games. 
Now these are only the European box arts, and not the American or Australian ones. The only difference between the box arts would probably be the rating. In America they have ESRB, and in UK they have PEGI. Thank you for watching this episode of Speculations, and don't forget to leave a like, comment, share, and subscribe. It really helps. And don't forget to watch the next one, which is going to be about the maps. I'm really looking forward to doing that one, and I had a lot of fun making this one too. This is a Slimy Dog signing off. Goodbye.